Hey guys, in this video I'll be reviewing the new Wilson Shift 315. Now if you know my review style, I most often do not discuss technology or innovations that are used in the rack build. My main focus is to observe how the racket plays fundamentally and more importantly how it compares to the rest of the rackets on the market of a similar spec range or product line. Before we get to the review, if you liked the video, give it a like to help with the algorithm, subscribe for more reviews, follow me on Instagram for updates, and if you want to support me and the channel, you can buy me a coffee in the link below or give me a super thanks. I also released a detailed review of the Functional Tennis Sabre which you can click here to check out. If you're interested in buying one, you can use my link below which will help the channel out a little bit as well. Let's quickly move on to the specs. The racket comes in a 99 square inch head size, 315 grams unstrung with strings added about 332 grams strung. The beam width is 23.5 millimeters constant beam with an unstrung balance of 32 centimeters. The stiffness rating is quite high at 68 RA stiffness and the average swing weight is listed to be about 325 by Tennis Warehouse but my shift was perfectly specced and the swing weight came out to be around 336 with an average gauge poly. Therefore I would be careful if you are going to ask one that's on spec as I think most people are probably going to want something under spec or if you prefer something lighter you should go with a shift 300 unless you really are keen on the string pattern. Speaking of which, the string pattern is an 1820 and uniquely has 10 mains in the throat. So when you string the racket, you have to start from the bottom up at the throat and not from the top of the frame where you traditionally see an 1820 begin. For string setups and modifications, my swing weight by default was already my max range at around 336 to 338. So I only experimented with string gauges and replacement grips to help with the swing weight or static weight. I decreased the weight to the handle to see what happens if I played with something that was more up my alley in terms of static weight. Most of my rackets are around 330 grams. So once I reduced the replacement grip and put on a Wilson Feather Thin grip, it went from about 337 grams strong to 330 grams. I also increased Increase the weight to the handle to see what happens if I played beyond my general static weight but the addition of a more headlight balance and I'll discuss my experiences later on. Quick recommendations for testing, I think just about every single person will have a different experience with this racket. It's going to be something that you either love or hate, just like the Wilson Clash. If you are seriously considering the racket, the only recommendation I can say is try and demo it with your own string and tension to eliminate as many variables as possible that could alter your playtest. I wouldn't consider this racket string sensitive so much, but maybe that the racket itself plays just a little bit differently, so it would be sensitive to people's play styles and how they experience it. To be on the safe side, if you're not super confident in your abilities to hit the sweet spot every shot, and you're a spin player, I would try dropping your standard tension by maybe four pounds or a little bit more, unless you already have a soft setup to begin with. If you're a flat player, then it may not be necessary as you'd want to maintain a more controlled launch angle. So for feel and stiffness, the feel of the racket is definitely unique in some kind of way, but not so inherently different to anything that I've ever played with. The feel personally didn't take me long to adjust to, and it has a slight amount of ball pocketing at regular tensions, where it's not too little and not too much. It doesn't hold the ball for too long in the strings, and it's not so fast of the string bed that I feel like I lose control. I find it to be quite a happy medium. The stiffness itself is certainly a high stiffness rating and with the shift more than anything, the string and the tension you go with is going to dictate and alter the experience a lot. Some rackets like the E-Zone feel muted no matter what string or tension that you use, but here it's very much reactive to the string that you choose. So use a stiffer string if you prefer a direct response that might be a little bit more unforgiving on off-center shots or a softer string to open up the ball pocketing and sweet spot a little bit more. Now, as you might know, I can sometimes have a slightly sensitive wrist, but nowadays it's definitely able to cope with a lot more brunt than it used to be as time has healed my injury. My normal tension of 48 pounds with a low to medium firm string like tier one Duraflux. At first hit, I definitely noticed the stiffness of the racket, but the gauge was on the thinner side at 1.18 millimeters. So I lost tension quickly enough. It felt firm enough that I felt the need to shake out my wrist a little bit from time to time. And there was some minor lingering soreness I could feel, but for someone healthy, in my opinion, it would probably feel comfortably firm at around 66 RA stiffness kind of feel. Then I moved on to a softer setup with tier one Black Knight paired with Ghost wire but still at 48 pounds my default tension and though it started off a little bit firm it was super smooth and plenty comfortable by the time it broke in and then from that point on I had no issues at all. Finally for my third setup I used tier 1 tour status at 44 pounds which is 4 pounds below my default and it was exactly how it felt with the ghost wire setup once it dropped tension. Neither of these strings are incredibly stiff so if I had to boil it down to anything it seems that higher tensions are probably a bigger factor in terms of feeling the stiffness. 
To describe the feel, there is clash-like properties, but not so much on the extreme side. So my only guess is that the tighter you string, the racket doesn't give in as much, and the stiffness of the hoop starts to show itself, where the racket doesn't flex or move so much. But the lower the tension goes, then it really starts to bring out more of that clash kind of feel, and you can really start to feel the racket move and flex a lot more. Overall, I would say the racket does a good balance of not being too harsh and not too soft for the average person. Also, I much prefer this racket without a dampener, where I would normally use one. When the tension is a bit tight, the dampener makes the racket feel super boardy and muted. Also, given the fact that it is an 1820 pattern, and you lose a lot of the feel, but once you take it out, I felt it was way better, and doesn't make any crazy pinging noises or sensations. But when the tension dropped, or you strung at a lower tension, it wasn't noticeable of a difference with the damper or not. Once I put in the dampener, it felt the same. For power with a high stiffness rating and a 23.5 millimeter beam, there's certainly going to be some accessible power. The Shift 300's power is going to be based on easier racket head speed capabilities, whilst the 315 is going to be more mass based power. Of course, if you can swing the 315 as fast as the average player can with the 300, then it's going to be a smoke show. I would classify the power levels to be of two different ranges, so between the medium and the high swings. For medium pace, I'm referring to a solid rally pace with good intent behind the ball and racket head speed, where your opponent is not going to crush a winner without taking a risk. For these kinds of swings, the shift produces a good ball, whether flat or spin. It's enough to keep rallies going without being attacked, but will not create any additional pressure from the power alone. Even with its mass, it has less power than the E Zone 98, and I would put it on par with something very similar to a fully modified Extreme Tour, which by the way is certainly an acceptable amount for very advanced players. But if I were to compare rackets of the same skill level, weight class, or swing weight, it definitely has less than the Technofiber T Fight ISO 305 and the Gravity Pro and the Blade Pro, but still noticeably more than the Radical Pro and the Speed Pro. For the high speed swings, if you can handle the weight and swing through like a kill shot or something to take complete control of the rally, these shots can be difficult to handle mainly because they have such a low trajectory. But where the ISO 305 and the Gravity Pro differ is that off the bounce, it will skid and penetrate through the court a lot more, whereas the shift is going to lose a bit of its pace on the bounce. As I said, most advanced players will likely find that it has ample power, but personally, for me as an all-out attacking player, here I would favor my Gravity Pro for the power levels because it has that extra punch that will take a few milliseconds away from the opponent, which will give you that slight bit more advantage. Even still, you'll really need a good racket head speed at this kind of weight range to produce a good ball on the Shift 315. Ideally, you would be looking to perform big, long and fast strokes. Cheating the swing with short, inefficient or armed strokes will not bring out its true potential in terms of spin and power. For maneuverability, for most people, I'm going to recommend that you look for an underspec version, so possibly something that is in the 308 to 310 grams unstrung range, or a measured swing weight that actually comes around 325 to 327, which is about 8 to 10 points lower than a proper spec one. Otherwise, you should go for the Shift 300 model and modify that as needed. Most of my experience in stock form found the racket to be initially very difficult to move around for my swing style, my loopier semi-western swing path. It was certainly a struggle for me to get my hand adequately around different types of balls that were either low bouncing short or deep balls. And likewise, just as difficult for me to get enough shoulder strength and hand speed on high balls. So in stock form, I would give it a low maneuverability rating. And just as I mentioned, remember mine was perfectly specced. So hence my recommendations of an under specced one. Now as I mentioned, I tried removing the original replacement grip and placed it with a lighter one, shaving off around 6 to 7 grams of weight and that put it around 330 grams strong, which is my most ideal range for most rackets that I use, even my E-Zone, Gravity Pro, Aero 98, you name it. This certainly helped a lot and made it feel very similar to the T-Fight ISO 305 in terms of its maneuverability as it made the racket overall lighter and usually I'm very sensitive to additional static weight. However, even with it still maintaining a high swing weight, that loss of the 7 grams of static weight made the racket become much less stable overall and lost its power potential because it lacked the plow through that it started with. So this led me to switch to a leather grip and bring it above my preferred average weight. And after my first session, although it was still heavy feeling, it was not as bad as I thought it would be. And actually it was better than it was in stock form. 
And oddly, by the second session, which was only the next day, my arm and strength completely adapted to the weight. And then the racket somehow felt even lighter and way more maneuverable at 345 grams than it did in stock. So for me, creating a more headlight balance really became a game changer and dictated the rest of my experience to be extremely positive once I got over the maneuverability issues. Also that using a leather grip did thin out the grip just a little bit more. So that also helped with the maneuverability as well. So if you either can handle it in stock form or you're strong enough to handle it at a heavier weight but more headlight, this might transform the racket into a completely different animal. Likewise, I was having troubles getting the racket around the one-hander in stock form. It wasn't terrible but not ideal. The additional headlight balance and the thinning of the grip made it really manageable even with a 23.5mm beam width and the weight that's beyond my usual means. Control is an interesting one with this frame. You can alternate between flat and very high launch angle for a dense pattern very easily. A full modern top spin stroke will absolutely blast through the court with a high arc, depth and very high bounce. Likewise, if you want to flatten the ball, you can laser beam through a line drive. Though one thing I did notice was I felt that spin control is easier to access and maintain consistency, but for flatter strokes you have to be slightly on the more cautious side with your contact point because the trajectory can be extremely linear if you want it to be, and if you slightly mistime the ball you can risk it landing a little bit more short than you'd like, especially if you're hitting at a medium rally pace. For me, it seemed to work best when I really swung through hard, being able to utilize the heft and stability of the racket to push right through the court. So there's definitely a lot of versatility to be accessed in this racket. The 1820, much like the ISO 305's 1819 pattern, did not stop it from getting a healthy launch angle, but also that extra bit of precision as well when you needed it. For the shift, you have directional control, depth control, spin control. I've also thought it was great for touch shots when I performed them. And as mentioned, full control of the launch angle. Not to mention that once I added the leather grip for an increased static weight, then it also enhanced the ability to block and redirect shots at any given pace with great stability. For spin, spin is excellent for an 1820 pattern and very much reminds me of the ISO 305 in terms of spin potential for how they're both denser patterns and able to access this kind of spin. If I were to compare spin to another frame in terms of RPMs though, I would put it in the extreme tour range just as much as I would in the power category. To me, they are very, very close in terms of spin potential, maybe even slightly less than the Extreme Tour. And also remember the Extreme Tour 1619 pattern is extremely dense as well, so they are not that far off. The Shift 315, as I mentioned, uses more mass-based power than the 300 being speed-based power, and the power itself is a good controllable range, but not like the Aero 98. And because it doesn't have that slightly extra zing in the shot, the ball is going to spin hard, but once it hits the court, it will lose a bit of its initial speed, much like the flat drive shots that I was talking about but because it's a loopier ball then now obviously you're providing something that's easier for your opponent to attack if they're really on top of it. For me I would definitely prefer to have that extra kick from the Aero 98 or the ISO 305 but I think that many people would be very happy with the amount of consistency that can be generated from how the shift behaves when ripping through every single shot. There's a lot of control built into the racket where you can swing out with a lot of confidence and you won't miss as long as you put enough spin on it. For serving, serving in stock form was not that bad. The weight and balance kind of messed me up a little bit and it took me a slight adjustment with my swing path to really find the right one to work. Once I figured it out, then it served just as good as any other racket. But in stock, I would need time to adapt and memorize the way I have to optimally move it through the service motion because it's definitely different to how I would usually serve with an E-Zone or a Gravity. But without any customizations, there were some points in time where I was probably a bit more tired and the weight was very noticeable and heavily weighed my swing speed down and that really affected the quality of my serve because my shoulder strength had not adapted to the weight yet. But all of this was in consecutive sessions so after one more good long practice with the shift I added that leather grip to change the balance simultaneously while my strength and body adapted to the weight and now I can swing it just like any other racket and with the extra maneuverability and headlight balance that I'm feeling I can serve just as well with this racket with no drop off. That 1820 pattern will give you all the accuracy you need for the serve. That spin potential in general will give you access to great kick serves. And likewise, the combination of those two factors will also allow you to provide a great slice serve. 
you just have to give it enough time. I mentioned that it probably only took me one session, but realistically, it was a culmination of one and a half, two weeks of hitting on and off with the shift. For the average person, uh, from my experience, it probably will take about two and a half to three weeks for you to adapt unless you're playing every single day. And that's when your body will adapt very quickly to the new weight. For Slice, it's been a while since I tested a racket that I just thought the Slice was crazy good. First, you have the 1820 pattern. Now you factor in that spin potential and you can have a super low trajectory from the controllable launch angle. The stability from the swing weight and the static weight hold it firm through a contact point and the racket allows you to rip through the ball in any type of position. The extra modification of the headlight balance, for me, high balls, low balls, defensive lunges, and balls that land deep and cramp you up, the racket moved very well in these positions to get underneath the ball, and the side spin and depth are just insanely good. One of the best slicing rackets that I've tried in a long time, because here, it's one of those rackets you feel like you barely have to try to get a good slice. Whereas there are other rackets that are also nice for slicing, but you have to focus a little bit more, and this one just comes naturally. For forgiveness, my normal tension at 48 pounds was a little unforgiving for how I like to play and I would mostly attribute it to the string pattern as with most 1820s, I do find that stringing lower is the way to go. The difference is that I don't find it a necessity with this racket. At my default tension, it felt more of a direct and targeted feeling racket and basically the racket would let you know if you weren't hitting the middle. It wasn't really that jarring off center, but it would kill the momentum of your ball. Once my tensions dropped into the low 40s, just like any other racket, then everything just opens up. But here you can maintain most of the control, especially if you hit with heavy spin. If you're someone who prefers a more direct feel, lower powered response and more control, then go with your regular tension. And if you're someone who wants something more like a modern day tweener that gives you more spin, more power and a larger sweet spot, then go with the lower tension, which will also dramatically help with the plushness as well. For stability, let's say you do get one perfectly specced and are expecting a mid to high 330 swing weight coupled with what I would say is a medium range beam thickness of 23.5 millimeters, then you have a recipe for quite a stable rack. In stock form, you lose out a little bit, but the stability is still pretty decent. Be wary that the racket's only going to be the stability that I'm describing at its proper spec. If you're having an experience where you're not finding it to be as stable, it's likely because you're using an underspec one. So that lower static weight may take away from the overall stability that the racket was probably intentfully designed to be built with. When you reduce the overall weight, you'll probably find it to shank a little more or not play to the expectation that I'm describing here because when I chose to use the lighter replacement grip, the static weight fell into the 330 gram range. The reduction of the static weight really affected the overall stability despite the swing weight still being maintained. Obviously, the more it weighs, the more stable it's going to be. And normally, I'm not a proponent of adding too much weight if it's not necessary, but because the leather grip and extra static weight gave me more maneuverability, but also increased the effectiveness of each other characteristic on my playtest, then it was the right way to go for me personally. Once I added that leather grip and more static weight, it was absolutely rock solid. I would give it very high points here because blocking on returns was a breeze. Swinging against high paced serves or ground strokes that you are receiving would just go straight through the ball like butter. Very minimal twisting, particularly when you have lower tensions so that off center shots are a lot more forgiving and not affected at all. It was more stable than the ISO 305 and really starts to put it in the realm of the Blade Pro, Pro Tour and RF97. A very high quality experience all around. In the stock form, it is above average in stability, but with the extra modification, it just takes it to a whole new level. For volleys, I always like to talk about volleys last because aside from technique, volleys involve a number of characteristics that I already mentioned that help it play great. Here, like the Slice, I haven't felt a racket that was just innately so enjoyable to volley with and is purely effortless. It did not feel slow at all with the leather grip modification. I played doubles with this and was able to react to everything. The stability completely carries over and everything about this makes it so easy to fend big shots. It doesn't give in at all. It feels as rock solid as it does from the baseline. And in my doubles, I was just doing a ton of drop volleys and touch shots, barely missing. And this was one of the best overall volley experiences that I've had since I can remember in recent years.
So who's this record for? If you're someone who enjoys a weighted up extreme tour, this might be a solid contender with minimal modifications. If you can find the right customization to give you the maneuverability that you need that I found, this becomes an all court racket built with massive spin, plow through stability that can both maintain high levels of consistency and relentless attacking capabilities that allow you to make your way to the net and finish off effortlessly. Now if you don't have the strength or can't find the right setup then it's possibly not the right racket for you as I would recommend this racket for very high intermediate to advanced players who have the ability to swing such a static weight and swing weight. In that case the Shift 300 is certainly a contender as a potential platform racket or maybe even an overspec 300 might work very well for you if you enjoy the idea of this racket. For my final thoughts, I have to realistically give this two scores being in stock form and customized. Even though my customization was bare bones and minimal, it affected the overall playability so much that it became a whole different racket in my opinion. My first impressions with the racket were very bland. I felt that it was just a solid control racket that was hard to get around and did everything decently well but nothing to impress me in any way compared to other rackets on the market. But with that slight modification, boy did it increase every single category and enhance it in every way possible. And usually I do not take a long time to adjust to rackets but this is something that I had to take my time with. Upon using the racket in stock form for multiple sessions nothing really felt special and once I started modifying it even still I had to use a couple of sessions where my strength had to adapt. Once I fully adapted the strings hit the right tension, I used the right setup, the maneuverability and headlight balance was all correct. It was day and night and everything just seemed to snap into place and the playability of the record transformed into something else. My ground strokes became more fluid, faster and easier to swing. The maneuverability became almost effortless for the swing weight and weight range, even easier than my Gravity Pro that was 15 grams lighter. Control was improved as a result of my ability to time the ball better and swing through every shot consistently at the same speed. Stability was taken to a whole new level where I could charge the net, lock an incoming ball with pace and it would just sink into the strings without the frame moving at all. Volleys were as solid and maneuverable in the highest regard to any racket that I've played with in the last few years years, even for Slice, that extra plow through stability and ease of use in swing ability was also taken to another level just because of that modification. I can tell you if that you can play with this at a higher weight range, you will not regret it. This is a crazy good racket once it's perfected and I would rival this to something like a modified Blade Pro. The only difference is the Shift 315 is kind of like the equivalent for a spin player who can flatten out balls and the Blade Pro would be something better for a hybrid player who hits flatter but can use spin to access more margin on occasion. I hope this review gave you some insight into the Shift 315 like no other. A very high quality racket that surprised me in many ways once I gave it enough time. Just be sure to demo this racket and demo it well because you may not like it and if you do buy it don't give up on it too easily. That concludes my review. Please like and share the video and subscribe to help the channel out. Check out my racket ratings at the end for the stock form and the customized version of the Shift 315. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.